Hello everybody, it is Charlie here. I hope you're well. Wow, this feels incredibly weird. I think it's been three months since I last uploaded a video, which is just crazy. I can't believe three months has gone so quickly. Um, I don't want to dwell too much on last year because it was rubbish. But basically after losing Blue, which is obviously the last time I spoke with you guys, um, things mental health wise for me just went really really downhill um particularly with depression it was i had about a month in particular where things were just really scary i just i yeah i was just crying all the time and i just had no like motivation to want to do anything there was times when i just sort of didn't really want to be here at all anymore things were just things were just bad and i just i needed some time away to um just kind of get my head together really um and just as i was doing that i caught the flu which i had for almost two weeks in total i had it all the way over christmas which was great fun it's the first time in my life i've ever had proper proper flu and oh my goodness it was rough i'm very glad that's over um and just generally i'm so glad to have a whole new year in front of me i feel like there's so many um changes that i want to make um to my life but also to my channel as well because while i've been away it's allowed me to kind of reflect on my videos and stuff and i've realized that my channel has become quite sort of stale really over the past probably couple of years really and i want to try and change that um i feel like for as long as i can remember i've just been doing videos that i feel will get me um more views um because then i just think well that's what you guys obviously want to see and obviously i want to give you guys what you want to see um so even though i've had like other things that I've wanted to try I've just put them off thinking that it you know they may not be things that you guys are necessarily that interested in but this year I really 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 want to try a few different things and just see how they go one other big change that you're going to notice on my channel that I did want to mention quickly before I get into today's actual video is that I'm going to be doing a lot less um book hauls um because i towards the end of last year i was noticing that i kept getting into really really bad reading slumps and it wasn't that i didn't want to read i just couldn't seem to choose anything um and basically all i was kind of getting through was just graphic novels and manga anything else I just wasn't able to choose even though like I said I really did want to read and I couldn't understand why it was um, but then it started to suddenly um, occur to me that the reason it's happening is because I just I'm constantly buying so many books and it just becomes overwhelming in the end and I just think once it's become overwhelming that is then why i can't decide what to read and so that i end up just not i just end up not deciding at all and just having piles of books everywhere just isn't making me happy anymore it's just making me stressed out and i just feel an awful lot of pressure to be reading them all so when i'm reading one book i'm already thinking of the 10 that i still have on my shelf that i need to read that kind of thing so i I'm going to be just generally cutting down on buying books, hence the less book hauls. Um, really I just want to aim to buy books that are either next in a series that I've been reading or books in a series that I've already started but I just don't own a particular book in that series or books that I'm like really highly anticipating, things like that. Or the odd one if I'm just like in the bookshop and I see one that I think, oh that sounds absolutely amazing, then um, I will allow myself to grab that as well um i do hope this video is in focus by the way the lighting is it's it's only early but it's already getting dark outside so it's really hard and i can't see if it's properly in focus or not i hope it is um 
yeah, so I'm going to be buying a lot less books, hence the less book hauls. However, because I have been away from my channel since October, I think it was the end of October, um, I have been accumulating a lot of books in that time. Books that I've been sent for review, books that I've bought myself, books that I got for Christmas or with Christmas vouchers. So I do have a humongous, probably the biggest haul I've ever done on this channel coming up. I'll probably split it into two parts because I just think that it will be ridiculously long if I try to do it all in one. So yeah, there'll probably be two parts of that and that one will be coming. And then after that is when you'll start to notice that there will be less um, book hauls. Um, and hopefully I'll just kind of get that joy back of buying books as well. Because I think buying books all the time, that's something else that it's taken away. It's taken away the joy of going into a bookshop and buying books. And I want to find that again. So, yeah, I'm hoping if I buy less books, I'm going to feel less overwhelmed. And I'm going to enjoy it more when I do buy them. Fingers crossed. So, I've been rambling for almost seven minutes now, which is ridiculous. I'm going to have to edit this down. Um, so, for today's video, I am going to be talking about my 10 favourite books of 2018. I know we're almost in February. I am so behind with this. I'm behind with everything right now. I'm kind of just trying to catch myself up. Um, and I was kind of thinking that maybe I wouldn't do this video at all, but... I really want to talk about these books here because a lot of them I don't think I actually got the opportunity to talk about last year. Um, so hopefully you might find something in here that will pique your interest. These are not in any order because as I always say, I find it difficult to narrow down to 10 books, let alone putting them into any order. So I'm just going to grab at them as they come, but I love them all equally. So without further ado, let me share with you I don't know what my arms are doing. Um, my top 10 books of 2018. The first book is um, Halloween by John Passarella. Passarella, I hope I've said that right. Sorry about the glare on this one. It's got a really shiny cover. Um, this is the novelization of the most recent um, Halloween film that came out towards the end of last year, um, which I still have not had the opportunity to see yet. I'm like desperately just wanting it to come out now i think it comes out at the end of february so not too much longer to wait but that was why i bought the book just to kind of give myself some way to sort of know about it whilst i'm waiting for the film um and this was just fantastic i absolutely loved it and i'm really intrigued to see the film now um to kind of see if because when you're reading this book, you really can visualise it as a movie. So I'm hoping that when I watch the film, it will be as I've visualised. So um, this one is set... Is it like 40 years? Yeah, 40 years. Um, I think after the first movie, I think it's supposed to be like a sequel from that. So Laurie Strode, who is obviously Michael Myers' sister, who he kept trying to kill but never managed to she has basically grown into a bit of a hermit um she kind of locks herself away in her house that's kind of in the middle of nowhere training herself with weapons and in this we meet um her daughter and her granddaughter and what happens when michael myers escapes from the um smith's grove mental hospital and it was just fantastic. As I said, I could really visualise this as the film. I liked how we had different bits where we sort of had the perspective of Michael. And um, then we had the perspective of Laurie and the granddaughter. And two people that are making a podcast on the Michael Myers story, which was interesting as well. Um, and yeah, I just really, really, really enjoyed this. And I think um, even if maybe you've not even necessarily, like watched the Halloween movies before or whatever um, but you like a good slasher novel then this is perfect for that as well. The next book is Blanky by Keelan Patrick Burke and this is a really short novella and it is about a guy called Steve whose baby daughter sadly dies and um, one night he is in the apartment and he hears this sound coming from what was her bedroom. I'm just looking at the back because I read this one quite a while ago. Um, 
yeah it's in his in her old room and inside there he finds blankie which was a little blankie that she absolutely loved but he actually buried his little daughter with this blankie so it's like how the hell has this got here and then bad things start to happen this was so creepy so clever it's one of those books where you pick it up and you just read it all in one go i absolutely loved it i think i'm pretty sure that keelan actually self-publishes his books which i have a love-hate relationship because often when i've read self-published books before they haven't been very good there's been a lot of like spelling mistakes and errors and i just haven't enjoyed that many of them but he's a fantastic if you are a fan of horror then i would highly recommend checking out any of his because they're brilliant and this one was phenomenal really gave me the creeps and yeah just absolutely loved it my next favorite is yokai stories by zach davison and eleonora de oh i don't how do you say that i have no idea can you see that is that focusing i don't know if that is focusing yeah. Uh, let me see if I can get that to focus so you can read that name. Is that going to focus? There, can you see that name? I don't know, I don't think that's going to focus. Um, but anyway, she does the illustrations in this book. I have developed over the past year a real obsession for Japanese books about yokai. So yokai is the Japanese word for monsters, demons, ghosts, that kind of thing. And in here there is 16 little stories, each featuring a different type of yokai. So basically, and they're all like two to three pages long. And basically what you have is, oh, let me just find one. Um, goodness me, let me see if I can find my favourite um, picture in here. There's a really cool picture in here that I love. Um, I should have probably found this before. But me being me, I didn't even... Oh, I think it might be this one. Yeah. So basically what you have is you have a picture of the yokai. And then you have the little story that goes with it. And as I said, they're all like two to three pages long. And these are just wonderful. Like, I just... It, I think if you're really interested in like Japanese kind of like folklore stuff like that and this is just perfect and it's so beautiful it's a really nice little book that you can easily just carry around with you and i just i thoroughly enjoyed all of the stories in here there wasn't one that i didn't like um so yeah the next book that i want to talk about should come as no surprise i'm pretty sure that i did a book review on this i can't remember if i did i'll put the link to it down below um, but I read um, both of this author's books last year and, oh, they blew me away. I can't wait for her new novel to come out this year. But I just wanted to choose one of them to put in this video. So um, I went with this one because it just nipped, nipped the other one to the post for me. And this is The Party by Robin Harding. Um, I really hope that this video is in focus. I actually have no idea. Um so this is about a girl called hannah um and it's a 16th birthday so her parents let her have a little like sweet 16 sleepover she just has a few friends over on the evening of this party there is an accident and one of her friends is left with a very bad facial disfigurement and this book basically accounts the repercussions of this from lots of different points of view people in the community you know the girl who had the accident her mum hannah her parents all of that kind of thing and how these different characters um how they kind of cope with this situation and what it leads to bad decisions people trying to hide secrets so this is this isn't a very fast-paced thriller it is more of a kind of character study slow burn as was her pretty face robin's other novel um but i loved it robin just writes such great characters that you can really visualize them and you really feel things for them whether it be hate 
or you really really love them and you want them to like be okay and do well or whatever and because of that you really care about the story and what is happening to them and I just I absolutely just I couldn't get enough of this book it was one of those books where I was reading it really fast because it was great but I didn't want it to be over basically I just oh I just loved it so 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 much um and I would definitely recommend this and Her Pretty Face. Next book that I want to talk about also has a sequel coming out this year, which I'm super excited for. And this is Sweet Little Lies by Kaz Freer. Um, this is set in two time periods. So we have the 90s, lots of 90s references, which I loved. And then we have the present day. So in the 90s, we follow our main character, Kat, and she is just a child. And her sister's friend, Marianne, goes missing. And something she always remembers from that time is that her father lied to the police. He said he didn't know this girl, and actually he did. So she's always thought, did my dad have something to do with this? Then we fast forward to the now, where Kat is a police detective on a murder squad. And she's called out to um, the body of this woman that has been found. She's been murdered. And she realises, Kat realises when she's sort of at this crime scene that it is literally just up the road from a pub that her dad now owns so not only did he lie about knowing this girl back in the 90s he is also very close to where the body of this other woman Alice has been found this was another one where once you start it you just cannot stop and again I think that's largely down to the main character Kat I really liked her. I really liked seeing all the goings on in the murder squad as well. I thought that was brilliant, kind of police procedural. Um, but yeah, if you're just wanting a really gripping thriller that you're just going to be able to dive in and just not want to stop, then this is the one for you. And as I say, I cannot wait, cannot wait for the sequel to come out this year. I actually, I think I'm on the list for an arc of the sequel, so fingers crossed I get one of those because I can't wait to read it. Next book that I want to talk about is my biggest surprise of the year and I always try to put one of these in this video every time I do it each year because and what I mean by surprise is that maybe it's a genre that I don't usually like or a storyline that wouldn't usually interest me but really did and this one was for sure my one from 2018 and this is Below Zero by Dan Smith. This is a YA sci-fi horror. And it centres around a boy called Zach. Um, whose parents are scientists. And they made these spider drones. For this base in Antarctica called Outpost Zero. And he is on holiday with his parents and his sister when they get a phone call saying that one of the drones is broken they need to come to outpost zero and they need to fix it so him and his sister go along with his parents but without saying too much when they get there very soon it becomes clear that something is wrong everyone that should be there is not there everything looks like it's been left in a hurry and they literally just can't find anyone there are these little like dead creatures on the floor and you guys know that I'm not a big fan of sci-fi, which is why this was such a surprise to me. But I picked this up because it was recommended to me in the bookshop. And I'm so glad I did because it blew me away. I think I liked it because if you're... I'm somebody where I... The reason I think I don't get along with sci-fi is because I don't always understand all of the terminology. But this one was really easy to follow. So if you're like me, this would be a really good sci-fi one to go into. It was so much creepier than I was expecting it to be for a YA novel. Like, some of the parts were chilling. And the main character, he sees the ghost of this old explorer, which is creepy as well. And it just, it blew me away. It really blew me away. I just was so surprised by how much I enjoyed it. So, yeah, if you are looking to try something a little bit different, then Outpost Zero is the one for you. Next up, I have a graphic novel. Um, my only graphic novel in here actually and I read this right towards the end of last year I read both the volumes I've got the second one up here as well um, and this is Space Boy by Stephen McCraney and this is another one that really surprised me it's about a girl called Amy 
who lives in space with her parents. Um, yeah, she lives in a mining colony. But one day there is an accident and her father is blamed for it, so he gets fired. Which means that they are then sent back to Earth. They're cryogenically frozen so that when they get to Earth they will still be the same age as they are now. Um, but it does mean that her friends back in space will have aged. And Amy's obviously really sad about that. And it's about her trying to adapt back to this life on Earth, which is very different. Um, I think it's set like somewhat in the future when they're in Earth. Um, because there's a lot more technology. Um, they have these amazing like glasses that they can put on. Which have this whole world of like virtual reality in them. I'll see if I can find a picture. Um, where you can really see it um because i just thought it was so awesome um let's have a look so like here when you put them on and you look at your other classmates you can all have these like characters that you make of yourself when you've got the glasses on and you can play like different games and when you're in the classroom so for example she's having like this biology lesson and she puts her glasses on and it's literally like she's it's like she's underwater and she can see all these creatures in the classroom it was so cool and i just i really it's such a beautiful story with beautiful artwork and i just fell in love with it i absolutely fell in love with it and the characters and the story um and then she meets this boy who cuz amy basically sees people as flavors and she sees this boy she meets this boy at her school and he's the only person she's ever met that she can't assume. so you have that intriguing bit going on as well but this was just phenomenal i absolutely honestly just loved this i just oh i just i absolutely loved it again another one for if you maybe don't love sci-fi give this one a go anyway that i want to talk about is a manga and this is another one that i read towards the end of last year um it's i'm actually up to volume three in this series now but i'm only going to talk about the first volume obviously and this is the promised neverland by kayu shirai and posuka demizu don't know if i've said that right this is another one that's a bit shiny so you probably won't be able to see that but this is about a group of kids that live in Gracefield House, which is an orphanage. And they live with this woman that they know as mum. And, you know, they love living here. Everything seems wonderful. Until one day, a little girl goes off to be rehomed. And she leaves her teddy behind. So two of our main characters, Emma and Ray, they, like, run after her to go and give it back. And I don't really want to give too much away. But they discover something which changes the whole entire way they look at Gracefield House and their mum. And they realise that there is a very dark purpose as to why they're there. And when I say dark purpose, this is super dark. Like, way darker than I was expecting it to be. And there's times where you're reading it and you're like, oh, this is okay. And then you turn the page and you see something that you can't believe and you just like sit there for 10 minutes just looking at the same page because you, you just can't believe that that's happened obviously i don't want to like give too much away so i don't want to show too much of the artwork but i just love this i loved the characters i loved the story it's really gripping and i can't wait to carry on with this series okay so my um penultimate book and I know I said these weren't in any order, but this was, without a doubt, my favourite read of last year. Blew me away. And if you are looking for an intense edge-of-your-seat thriller, then look no further. This is a book that you have to try out. And this is You Let Me In by Lucy Clark. So this is about a woman called Elle, who is a writer. And she goes on a writing retreat, and she lent, rents out her house as like an Airbnb. Um, and her house is basically, it's on a cliff in, is it Cornwall? Oh god, I can't remember, I think it's Cornwall. It's like on a cliff, kind of in the middle of nowhere with like one set of neighbours. And she rents out her house. She's not comfortable with doing it, but she needs the money. And this book starts when she arrives home from the retreat. And 
almost as soon as she goes into the house she feels like something's wrong she feels like things have moved around she hears sounds in the night like somebody might still be in there guys this book really scared me like it's one of the most tense thrillers that i've ever read it just I felt so uncomfortable whilst reading it it really makes you paranoid um and it's it's also one of very few books that i've ever read in my life to give me a nightmare like that's how on edge it made me but it was phenomenal like an absolute page turner i really really enjoyed this i just it's a really big book it's like just over 400 pages but i read it i think within a couple of days because it's addicting and you just want to know what's going to happen so yeah if you're looking for a creepy dark edge of your seat tense thriller you let me in is one that you definitely need to try then the final book that i want to talk about is gap here in ghost town by michael pryor this is an australian release and it follows our main character anton who is part of the marin family they are a family of ghost hunters and he's really reluctant about this he doesn't really want to be a ghost hunter um so he makes this deal with his dad that on his gap year he will go full time into the family business and then if he doesn't like it at the end of it he will just not be a part of it anymore um and one night when he is out on a ghost hunt he comes into contact with a girl called rami who is from the company of the righteous there are a lot of different um ghost hunting companies and families and things that all deal with ghosts in different ways and Anton's family used to be a part of the company of the righteous but they didn't agree with his father's hunting methods so they were asked to leave and we have this kind of rivalry between these two Anton and Rani but then they sort of want to learn each other's ways but there are also um people that want to use ghosts for bad things and there is one woman in here who is using them as a kind of form of revenge and they need to stop her this book was absolutely fantastic anton is one of my favorite main characters from a book ever he he just made me laugh out loud on so many occasions but then you turn the page and it would be super creepy and you have all of these different type of ghosts um some that are really dangerous there's ones that are called like lingerers or just people that just don't want to go and they're really well described and you also have this really good kind of um mystery in here about who this woman is that's using the ghosts for revenge purposes why she's doing it and i just absolutely loved this i'm a sucker for anything to do with ghost hunting and this was just really really great really original fun and i loved it and i'm really hoping at some point there's going to be a sequel to it as well also it's a really nice paperback it's really floppy and lovely and yeah i just loved it so those are my 10 favorite books of 2018 please do let me know yours in the comments down below and i will see you very soon for that ginormous book haul. Bye!